It's Wednesday. Hi, 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 hi. I'm so excited. We have such an awesome guest for you guys today. Women Crush Wednesday time. Heather Carr. She's going to join us. Um, she is so incredible, and her story is so interesting, and I cannot wait to chat with her. Let's see if we um, But there's a lot to talk about, and I don't have a whole lot of time with her because she's a very busy woman. So there she is. Hi, Heather. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm so, so glad that I was able to get some time. Thank you for taking the time to jump on with us. I know you're a busy woman, but uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be able to be a part of your show. Well, first of all, Big Raider win. Congratulations. Thank you. Must have been really fun at the car house this week. It, um, it has been. <laughs> I bet it has. I bet it has. And and I really love that you wanted to be a part of this because for you, you do celebrate other women. And when we spoke on the phone yesterday, you talked a little bit about how amazing the other females are in the Raiders organization. Can you speak a little bit about your relationship with the other women? Because for me, when I came in, I was amazed at the, the women that were part of the Raiders organization from the production team to the marketing team to the women that represent you guys. It's just, it, it felt like I was instantly accepted and I love that so much. What was it like for you and what is it like for you with the other women in the Raiders organization? Yeah, so I think I would best describe it as family. We're all family. We're really close. Um, you know, we hang out, like, all the time. I probably see all the ladies probably two or three times a week, you know. Um, we have a Bible study that we do together. Um, we're always talking. We have group chats we do. Um, so all of us, like, wives and girlfriends are really close on the player side. And then even on the coaching staff side, we're all pretty close. Mm -hmm. We have, like, um, a Raider app that we all can kind of share what we're doing throughout the week or what we're doing on game day. So it's just a really special, special place to be a part of. Yeah. And, and I know you guys have talked about how philanthropy and giving back is so important to you guys. And I just absolutely love that because I think the legacy we leave is how we impact other people. And for me, I grew up in, in a, a competitive industry and in broadcast and, it was hard for me to, to get my start doing it. And so if I can make it a little easier, make someone feel less alone, something that right. we talked about uh, yesterday on the phone, like that to me is what brings me joy and makes me feel like I'm contributing in some way. And it's not just about me. And that's what I love about you is like I see that with you guys. I mean, a big shout out to Melody Carr for, for even putting us in touch because in my time working with David, David Carr at mm -hmm. NFL Network, the sense that I've always gotten from the Carr family is humility and modesty. And um, you guys are just genuinely good people. And is that something that has always been a priority for you to just treat people like people? Yeah, exactly. I think just from a young age, just treating others how we would want to be treated, right? And I think just my biggest thing is always loving on people, encouraging women. I think that nowadays you don't really see that like people want to bring others down and so I just feel like I just want to um, be an encouragement to others um, just always when people see us I want them to know like we love them you know no matter what background you have we love you come into our house anytime we will love on you you know and that's kind of always been our big thing yeah I love that and you see that too in Derek's post-game press conferences is it's just like he he wears his heart on his sleeve you can tell he just cares about the team he cares about the fan base uh he cares about his relationship with coach Gruden um and and I love it but this isn't about Derek this is about Heather Carr thank you so much again for taking the time because I know you are a busy woman in fact you have four kids essentially you are the CEO girl you are the CEO <laughs> of the household you are the quarterback of the household and I want to talk a little bit today about resilience. I want to talk a little bit about self-care. And I want to talk a little bit about um, just women and mentorship in general. But first and foremost, when you are getting pulled in so many different directions and you have four little ones running around, an NFL quarterback that's crushing it in the, in, 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 in the league, how do you, because this is what I struggle with, which is 
I always try to make sure everybody else is good. And then I take care of myself. And although that sounds wonderful in theory, I get burnt out. Right. I get a little exhausted and I'm not taking care of myself. So what is that relationship like with you, Heather, when, you know, you have so much to take care of? Like, how do you take care of Heather? Right. I think that's big for all women. I mean, we all try to take it on ourselves. We don't really want to ask for help. And I think that's um, such a big thing that I've realized is not only um, taking care of myself, because when I met my best, I can be a better right. wife, a better mom. They're not getting my leftovers. Um, yep. So I think that, I mean, I'm still growing in that. Um, I think just being able to ask for help or also being able to, um, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, being able to say no. And it, it's it's okay to say no. You know, like right now I know my calling is for my children and my family and raising them. So I think that that's a big thing is just being able to know, you know, what am I called to do right now? And being, you know, confident in this is where God has placed me and it's okay if I have to say no to this or that or, you know, give myself some time or, you know, just prioritize being able to keep myself healthy, work out, you know, and handle all the normal house stuff, you know, and the family. So I think... That's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a big thing because it is so hard because it's actually, ironically enough, the most compassionate thing you can do is, believe it or not, say no. Because when you say yes to everything else, you are so, you deplete yourself. And then that's where resentment builds. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. That's when I say yes to everybody else and everything else. And then I have no time for me. And like you talked about, you don't want the people that you love most to get your leftovers. Right. You want to be able to show up for people. Was that something that when you, and I honestly bought a book that <laughs> my girlfriend gave it to me called The Art of Saying No. And it was a, it was a great read. <laughs> But was that, I mean, and it's something I had to learn. Was it something that for you, you needed to just like, I got to learn how to do this. It's so hard because you want to say yes to everybody, but you can't. Right. right. Yeah. I think I definitely, I'm, I'm a people pleaser. So I want right. to be able to do everything for everyone and, yep. you know, always be here to help or there. And I just realized like my calling right now is for my kids and my family and Derek, you know, and I feel like I definitely, I needed to make sure that my priorities were there, you know, and so I just learned that I don't want them to get the leftovers, yeah. you know, so it was just hard. It was hard to be able to say no, but I just knew that that's where my calling is right now. Well, and that's, so I'm so glad that we were talking about that because this is part of why I do the Women Crush Wednesday is, is to hope that other women tune in and men. Because they can learn something too. Yeah. Um, right, right. What is the advice that you can give to other women that have a lot going on that helps you? You know, is it is it because we talked about it yesterday, which I love the making the lists. That's right. Helps. Yeah. Um, do you have advice for other women that have a lot going on? How they can find a place to like balance? Right. I think it's important community. I think that's important, you know, um, that they get filled um, with community. And um, I, I, like I told you yesterday, I'm a list person. And I would, you know, I would look at my list. But then I soon realized, like, I need to just wake up every morning and say, God, what do you have for me today? And if I don't get to my list, that's okay. You know, I got to do what he had for me um, today. So I think that. Um, just being able to kind of sit back and and ask yourself, you know, um, mm. when you're busy, like, what is it really my priority, right? Because sometimes we get busy and the little things or things that, you know, um, aren't really, like right now, like with my children, they're, they're most important. I'm raising the next generation. So, you know, if I don't get to the list that I had to do, but I got to spend those extra moments teaching my kids, then to me, that's winning, you know? Oh, girl, right here. I love it because <laughs> um, that's where I feel the most fulfilled is when I'm helping young women um, go through the things that I know I, I'm struggling with or I struggled with when I was young. 
And if we empower and um, help the youth, the, the next generation, we're, set, we're, we're paying it forward. We're, we're, we're setting up success. And I think, especially for women, we've had to, and, and for sure moms, they have to navigate life without feeling like it's acceptable to ever complain. Um, or and, and by the way, I use the word complain, meaning like when they're having a tough time, it, it's you can't talk about it. You gotta be you gotta be a you know uh, a martyr. And I think that and I and even my mom, you know, my mom did everything. She you know she just did it without even saying she needed any help. Right. And I love that you that you that you lean on community because they are so important in in helping. And that's the way in which we can get give back and help other people. And um, that's why I'm just, you know, again, here with Heather Carr, I am so grateful that I was able to get some time with you because I really do just immensely admire you. And when I, when I was given the opportunity to have a t an opportunity to chat with you, one of the things that I thought of was you must be immensely resilient because you are the backbone of somebody in a way and, and children and kids um, that has to do some really tough stuff. Um, what is your relationship like with resilience? Do you feel like you're resilient? And how does that come to play, like, at home for you? I think we all have our moments, right, where we get down. And that's what the beautiful thing of Derek. He's there to lift me up, even in his busy, you know. And I think we're just, we play off each other. If he's down, I'm picking him up. And it's just beautiful to be encouraging and have women that can encourage you, too. And, right. you know. The NFL is is tough. We are blessed to be in it, but it's tough. You know, there's a lot on your shoulders. And, you know, seeing your husband, you know, have all the outside noise and all that that we've gone through through all these years, you know. And so I feel like that's where I have grown and we have grown. Um, just knowing, like, um, just kind of not listening to out, the outside noise, you know. We know that we were placed here. We know that we're with the Raiders, and we love our, our team here, our family here, and we just, you know, like Derek always says, he just goes to work. You know, he just just puts his head down and gets to work, and, you know, you just don't listen to the outside noise. And I think, you know, it, we're human. We do get discouraged, you know, but I think that, again, is the beauty of having those people in your life that uh, pick you up and encourage you. And that's always what I want to be. I want to be an encourager. I feel like I've been called to encourage. So I want to be that for our, our women on our team. You know, I want them to know. Um, and a lot of the times we always have these discussions of, you know, oh, being a stay-home mom or they don't feel um, inadequate per se. And I, I just tell them, like, you have the most important job. You are raising the next generation, you know, and this is – such a big deal don't ever feel like because you know you're not going to a job or this or that you know that you feel like you're not you're, you're behind the scenes right but you know if you weren't doing this for your household and your family your husbands couldn't go to work and, and right. perform what they do so I feel like that's that. you know just being encouraging to everybody yeah encourage everybody and and and, and as someone in the media I am so cognizant of the people that put themselves out there are human. We must be gentle with these people and not so overly critical. And I say that because I'm human and I mess up and, and it hurts me when I feel like I'm letting somebody down. Trust me, I'm my loudest critic. Right. You know, and I've been very public about my relationship with anxiety in hopes that I I didn't even know I had it until someone else told me what it was. And then I'm like, oh, thank goodness. I'm not alone. This is a thing. Right. And I just really am so um, honored and grateful that you're taking the time to uh, be vulnerable and be transparent because we just think that these people that are on TV or these people that play in the NFL are uh, human shields and not hear anything, but we're we're people too, and we just want, you know, we just want love and acceptance like everybody else, and just because you have a job that re requires you to handle pressure so intensely in front of millions of fans doesn't mean that that person shouldn't also be treated with, with hum humility and respect, and so um, I absolutely love that. 
and 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 I was just curious, and you pretty much answered how how one handles criticism because it's still really hard for me when I get feedback and and you know because I am putting myself out there and I know not everyone's going to love what I do, um, but I think and maybe you can speak to this and you kind of did already is if you just are happy with yourself and what you put out there, you don't really need to hear validation from anybody else. Right. Exactly. And that's kind of, that's where our faith plays in. We know who we are in Christ. And so that's all that matters, you know, and it's just waking up every day saying, Lord, I want to please you today. And so, you know, just doing the best that we can and just listening to, we know what he thinks of us. Right. You know, so I think that's kind of, um, where our faith plays in and just knowing who we are in him. I love that. Um, I only have a couple more minutes with you, and I wanted to get in this last question because we talked about it yesterday. And you do give so much of yourself. You have one daughter. You have three boys, a daughter, right? Uh, future generation, future female. I love it. And who is someone, though, for you, Heather, that was your greatest in, you know, female inspiration or your greatest female mentor? Is there someone that for you stands out? Yeah, so I feel like I'm so blessed to have, like, a lot of, you know, women that I can look up to. I mean, obviously, I look up to my mom. Um, I look up to Melody and my sister-in-law, Shannon, my mother-in-law. Um, we do have some great mentors, um, and I do look up to her. She has taught me a lot. Um, she's taught me that, you know, that raising children is the best accomplishment, you know, and she's they're running their church over in Tennessee, and I just see how she still, you know, is so great with um, being able to prioritize and know that it's important to have a strong family, and strong families, uh, you know, build strong churches, strong churches build strong communities, and, you know, communities change the world. And so I think just being able to really um, see that and how she does that, I feel like that is um, big on... I, I definitely look up to her, and so, yeah, but I, I'm so blessed, like I said, to have so many women that I really look up to and pull from all of them and see how, you know, they raise their kids or how they interact here or do that, so. Well, I look up to you, and oh. I'm so I'm so grateful. You're, you're such an incredible role model and truly the backbone of a lot of people. Um, very, very very important person you are. And so I, um, I'm super grateful that I was able to get some time with you today, Heather. Thank you so much. And, um, good luck this weekend, big game against Miami. I can't wait. We're on roll, but yeah, it's, it, it's going to be a fun season. Yes. We're excited. And thank you again for having me. It was such an honor. All right, Thanks. Heather, hopefully I'll see you in person soon. Yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye Heather. Thank you. Bye.